For this problem, we need to solve an indefinite integral. The integrand inside is the quotient of two cubic expressions. You can see that directly integrating the quotient could be extremely troublesome. Even though no other information has been provided, the denominator is deliberately factorized. This gives the hint that we should apply partial fraction decomposition to simplify the integral. We essentially want to rewrite the integrand as the sum of several fractions. By doing so, integration will become much easier, because now we just need to deal with the inverse of x and some constant. We will be expecting some natural log function and constant as the final result. We can start by simply opening up the parentheses. Doing so, we end up with an expanded cubic expression in the denominator. It happens that there are a few common terms above and below. The only difference between the numerator and the denominator is 11x. What we can do next is to add and subtract 11x in the numerator. This will create 1, while reducing the number of terms in the numerator of the fraction left behind. So we no longer have to deal with a cubic expression above. Our next step is to rewrite the leftover fraction into the sum of three fractions based on factors in the original denominator. Here, b, c, and d are all constants to be solved. And the reason why we put a constant in the numerators instead of some higher-order expressions of x is because the numerator after combining is just first order, and we want to avoid introducing too many higher-order terms in the numerator just to save ourselves some time and effort. We continue by combining the three fractions. Each of their numerators will be multiplied by the other two's denominators, and we know that the combined numerator is equal to 11x. Here I will demonstrate two different methods, so for b, c, and d. You might find one of them easier than the others. The important thing here is that I want to offer some more options to you as you might find certain ideas more intuitive than the others. For method 1, we open up all the parentheses and group the like terms together. This forms a quadratic expression in the numerator. Because the numerator is equal to 11x, we can perceive it as if the coefficient of x squared and the constant terms are both zero. So this translates to a set of equations, in fact, three equations and three unknowns. You can then apply the method of substitution to solve them. I presume that you are well versed with algebra, so eventually you should find out that b equals negative 11 over 2, c equals 22, and d equals negative 33 over 2. The algebra involved in method 1 is not difficult, but it does take some time. Instead, we can apply method 2 as a shortcut. Because the combined numerator is identical to 11x, it means that no matter what value x takes, the equality will stand. In other words, we can take some special values of x to simplify the equality. For example, if we set x equals minus 1, this will make the terms of c and d 0, and leaves us with only b as the unknown. A simple calculation shows that b equals negative 11 over 2. Same idea, we can set x equals minus 2. This removes the terms of b and d, and leaves us with only c, and this gives c equals 22. Finally, by setting x equals minus 3, b and c will be gone, and we found out that d equals minus 33 over 2. And these are the same results we got using method 1, but with much less effort. Either way, knowing b, c, and d, the original integral can be rewritten as follows. The integral of the sum is the same as the sum of integrals, so we can integrate each of the terms in the brackets separately. And our final result will be shown here. So overall, this exercise is less about integration techniques, but more about recognizing that partial fraction decomposition is necessary.